Hello everyone, Jules here. Today I'd like to talk about two books about Gnosticism and both of these books are anthologies. So I'm going to refer to these books as Gnostic Bibles, particularly in the title. Uh, these two books are um, edited by two different people and I wanted to talk about um, the differences between these two books for people who are interested in getting either one. Uh, I have both of these because they are not the same. They have different things in them. So I just wanted to talk about each of these books and what is in the books and what the differences are for people who might be interested. Both of these books were published by HarperCollins. They're still readily available. And they were both published around the same time. The first one is called the Nag Hammadi Scriptures. This is edited by Marvin Meyer, who is quite an expert on Gnosticism. He's a Gnostic translator and scholar, so he's quite well regarded. It's quite a thick book. It's about um, 800 pages in total, 830, including the index. And I can talk about, I'm going to talk about um, what is in here. This is the revised and updated international version. There is another version of this um, that's probably similar, but it doesn't say, for example, um, revised and updated here. It doesn't say that. So if you, if you um, get the other one that has a very similar cover that does not say revised and updated, uh, that would be okay too. This has got an introduction by Elaine Pagels. And I suppose I should also mention with this book that there is another book called The Gnostic Bible, which um, has it also has an introduction by Elaine Pagels. That is a different book. Um, I, I don't have that book because um, I didn't quite um, like the way it was arranged or the choice of scriptures that are in it. So that's fine for other people who may prefer uh, the book that's called the Gnostic Bible. It has some things that, that are the same in, as this book, but it's still not quite the same. And it's also um, by another publisher as well. So I just thought I'd mention that one. Um, some people may think that this Nag Hammadi scripture book is very like the one called Gnostic Bible, but it's actually different. Okay, now this is called Nag Hammadi. Um, these are the Gnostic scriptures. It's called the Nag Hammadi because uh, that is where the scrolls were found in a city in Egypt. It's called, the city in Egypt is called Nag Hammadi. So that is why um, these scriptures are known as the Nag Hammadi scriptures. Uh, they were discovered in the mid 1940s. Sometimes these get confused with the Dead Sea Scrolls, which were found in a, in a different area, a different place altogether um, at around the same time. But the Dead Sea Scrolls are the writings of the Essenes. They are not classed as Gnostic scriptures that the Nag Hammadi um, scriptures are. So I just thought I'd mention that as well. So to talk about what is in here, um, there is the index, um, which is helpful. Um, it's set out quite well. 
Um, some people would like this because of the way that it is set out. Um, also, the things that are in these um, in this book, um, the the writings are more complete. They're not excerpts quite so much. Um, so, I wanted to mention that as well for people who don't particularly want excerpts. They want um, these books that are in their entirety, the scriptures in their entirety. So to talk about what's in here, uh, there, there's no illustrations in either of these books. I also wanted to mention that. These are the scriptures. Um, so the Gospel of Truth, the Gospel of Thomas, which is quite a um, relatively known one. A lot of people um, who think about uh, Gnostic scriptures um, may only know about the Gospel of Thomas. And the Gospel of Philip, that is also relatively well known as a, as a Gnostic scripture. The nature of the rulers. And, I, and the other thing I wanted to mention here as well is that um, it, there is commentary on here as well. There's commentary and notes, notation at the bottom of the pages, which is really helpful too. Uh, you've got another one called The Nature of the Rulers. The, another one is The Origin of the World. All of these are really quite fascinating. They are really, really fascinating. So I'm just looking at what other things to mention that are in here. Um, what I really like here is that it's also got uh, Valentinian um, writings as well. And the Valentinians were uh, a Gnostic sect, quite a well-known Gnostic sect. Um, a lot of people may not realise that Gnosticism was not one set of ideas or concepts. It wasn't just one group. There were many groups with various Gnostic thoughts and ideas. So some people may only have heard about um, some of the main um, or common uh, ideas of Gnosticism, but there were there were there's a wide variation amongst all the different groups that uh, were around, and this was some um, early, uh, say around about um, 300 AD which is around the time, or well, 4th century, which is 300 AD. Um, this is around the time of the um, early official formation of Christianity. So just to put that into historical context. So this is a really interesting time. These ideas were competing with the early organization of Christianity. So that's that's a very um, interesting um, thought about, about all of that with the historical context. So what I like is at the end of all of this, uh, after all of these scriptures um, to read about, there is an epilogue about the schools of thought of the Nadi, of the Nag Hammadi scriptures, the different schools of thought that I was just talking about. So you've got the Sethian school of Gnostic thought, that was one of the main groups. You've got the Valentinian school, Gnostic thought. They also include um, something here that they call Hermetic religion. I would think of that more as Hermetic thought rather than Hermetic religion as such. But that's a really important inclusion as well because the very early hermetic ideas were also forming 
at the same time, if not before this, but they were circulating all, all at the same time. Um, you've got a bibliography in here as well as the index. And the way the pages are set out, it's just set out in the usual sort of way. And the reason why I'm mentioning that is because I will show you the format is different in the next book I'm going to show. So this is just set out in the usual kind of way. But it is a, it is a great book. Um, I think people uh, who want all of this in one volume, and I don't mean everything because that's why I've got the other book, but if you want um, most of the um, Gnostic scriptures that you may, that you may want to read, uh, use as a reference book, uh, if you want to uh, familiarize yourself with the uh, better known uh, scriptures this is a good one to get so I, I really quite like this so this is the Nag Hammadi scriptures edited by Marvin Meyer the next one is quite a thick book as well this is called the other Bible and this is edited with introduction by Willis Barnstone. And this is this looks like it's a thicker book than the other one. It's it's actually not. Um, the other book has thinner pages. So there's there's about thirty page difference. They're both around uh, eight hundred pages. I think the other one I just showed you was like eight hundred and thirty. I think this is only seven hundred and forty-five only, uh, in comparison. Uh, yeah, I think it's about seven hundred and forty-five, seven hundred and fifty, seven seventy. Okay, seven seventy. Yeah, the other one's got about. Um, 830 or something because it's got thinner thinner paper I'll just double check that for people who want to know but, but uh, yeah 800 and 840 and this one was seven sixty or something. Yeah, it's very deceiving because this one looks definitely looks thicker, uh, but it's it's. I'll, I'll show you why. It's to do with the formatting. So this says in one volume, ancient scriptures, Gnostic gospels. This one does have some Dead Sea Scrolls in here as well. Uh, visionary wisdom text. Uh, even a little bit of Kabbalah is in here, but these are excerpts from um, the Zohar. And they are relatively small excerpts, so don't get too excited about that one. You would need to buy some separate um, Zohar text for that. But if you just want an introduction, this is a really good overview book. It's really handy for that. Again, another great reference book. This one is uh, excerpts. Not all, not all of it is excerpts, but there's more excerpts in this book than the other book. So this is, I think this is more useful for um, overview. And this, this book has got more of the Book of Enoch in here. So I like that. So if you want, if you particularly want um, writings from the book, parts of the book of Enoch, this is this is the one to get. So I'll talk about what's in here as well. Straight, straight near the front of the book, the book of the secrets of Enoch. Now this book is different because it is grouped into the type of 
books and scriptures. This is all in, this is all categorized. So you've got creation myths in the contents. So this starts with creation myths. The other book goes straight into the scriptures and the books. This is all categorized, you know, according to the types of um, scriptures. Some people would prefer that to that could be good. That's why I think this one may be a better sort of overview book. You might like this one better than just going straight into um, the fuller, more complete scriptures. I like I like this for the overview. Uh, and the other thing I like about this book as well, in the other Bible, is that there's a glossary at the back as well. They can be useful to people as well. It's, it's not uh, a long glossary, but it is a general glossary um, for just general terms that are used, and that can be really useful. That's why I think this book makes a good um, general overview book. So, the first part of, first of all, you've got an introduction. And Willis Barnstone is also an expert on Gnostic scriptures. So you've got creation myths to start with. So it starts with um, excerpts from the Book of Enoch. The Book of Jubilees. The other thing I really like about this book too, like I said, it's definitely got things in here that are not in the other book. The more obscure things are in this book. The things that are a bit harder to get but, or hard, harder to see in a, in a book, harder to find. So you've got the um, book of parts from the book of Enoch, the book of Jubilees, that's the next one. You've got Manichaean creation myths. You've got um, the origin of the world. This is another book again. I'm just mentioning the different books that are in the creation myth section. Uh, the Archons, the Gospel of Philip. There is even a bit of excerpts of uh, from the from the Kabbalah in here, which is also to do with the creation some of the um, creation writings from the Kabbalah. Then it goes into um, wisdom literature and poetry. This is a bit different because this has got some Psalms in here, like for example the Psalms of Solomon and the Odes of Solomon. And the Odes of Solomon um, are not sort of easy to find in a book either. Then you have the Gospel of Truth and the um, Valentin, what's called the Valentinian speculation. So you can you can hear straight away that there's the Gospel of Truth, the Gospel of Philip, all, all these things that are in the other one, but but these um, are grouped differently, and these are more. In some cases, these are, these can be excerpts instead of the full thing. And, and some people may not want to read the full thing, especially when they're just getting familiar with the Gnostic writings. Gospel of Thomas, the Hymn of the Pearl. Then you've got um, the section in here that is called the Acts. Now, you have the Acts of the Apostles in a um, conventional Bible, but these Acts, of course, are not in the conventional Bible. So you've got the Acts of John, the Acts of Peter, the Acts of Andrew. Um, these are not, the Acts of Thomas, these are not in the conventional Bible. Then you have 
the books of the Apocalypse. Now, Apocalypse um, scriptures are also known as um, Book of Revelation in um, Protestant Bibles. So in the Apocalypse's section, you have Book of Enoch again. These are some, some other excerpts of Book of Enoch to, in regard to Apocalypse. Um, then you've got the Book of the um, Secrets of Enoch. You've got the Apocalypse of Peter, the Apocalypse of Paul, the Apocalypse of Thomas. These are not the Apocalypse or the Book of Revelation in the Bible. The Book of Revelation in the Bible was written by uh, John the Evangelist. So these are totally different Apocalypse books. Then you've got the writings of Hermes. Hermes... Um, Trimegisters, the Book of Thomas, and another one, another book that's uh, called The Thunder, or it's sometimes called The Thunder Perfect Mind. That's that's very interesting too. Then the next section goes into uh, diverse Gnostic texts uh, and. By diverse, these are just, you know, um, kind of like the remaining, remaining scriptures that are not grouped with the others. So you've got um, writings by Simon Magus, Valentinius and Valentinius, uh, Valentinian system. You've got... Uh, writings by the Sethians and also um, a writing by the Sethian Ophites, which were another group again. So it, it gives you an idea of how many different groups of, of Gnostic um, teachings were around. Then you've got the section on Manichaean and Mandian Gnostic texts. And it talks about, um, you know, Manichaeism and different Manichaean documents and the Mandian salvation and ethics writings. Then the last section is mystical documents. So you, this is really interesting. You've got the Divine Throne Chariot. That is actually uh, from the Dead Sea Scrolls, that particular one. Then you've got excerpts from the Zohar, which is uh, a, a major book uh, about Kabbalah. So you've got, uh, you've got some excerpts from that. Then you've got um, a bit thrown in here uh, of um, the, quite the well-known writing from um, Plotinus uh, of the Enneads. Then you've got the glossary that I mentioned, bibliography and index. The bibliography is probably a bit more helpful in this book as well because they are grouped according to subject instead of just a straight through bibliography, alphabetical bibliography that the first book has. So, all in all, oh, I'll just show you the format. The format is double, double format. Pages, you know, double format pages. Some people uh, like double format, some people don't. Uh, so keep that in mind. Um, I'm quite okay about um, you know the, the double column format. I'm quite okay about that. Uh, I also want to mention that the print is actually darker and clearer. Not well, not clearer, but it's darker, easier to see uh, in this 
this one in the other Bible. So, as you can tell maybe by now, they are different books. I have both because, um, you know, I, I want to have both and I need to have both. I'm, I'm quite interested in Gnosticism, so I, you know, I have to have both. Um, but if you're deciding, um, I, was tell, I have told you the differences between the two books. I think this is a better general overview because there's more excerpts in this one and for all the other reasons I've mentioned. Um, maybe if it's your first Gnostic anthology uh, or Gnostic Bible, this is probably the one to go with. Um, but if you don't like the formatting with the double column and you don't want excerpts and you want to go straight into it, then um, go with the Nag Hammadi one that I showed before. So okay, I hope people enjoyed uh, finding out about both of those books. I'll put some details below the video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.